Rui has a slight fever. He's got to keep taking his medicine. Mama gives him whatever motherly love she can from 6,000 kilometers away. Ever since their mother moved to Angola, Rui and his elder brother Ricardo have been living with their grandparents in Coimbra, about 100 kilometers south of Porto. Now they only ever see their mother on the monitor. Yes, they often cry because Mama's not here. Before the crisis hit, the grandparents, both retired, were getting along nicely, but now they have to scrimp and save. Meanwhile, their daughter in Angola is earning hand over fist. After you've worked your whole life, you'd like to be able to go out now and then. I took early retirement because I had cancer and a lot of operations. Now I wear a prosthesis, and my husband is retired. We could have been enjoying life a little, but now we can't. Rosie's husband, Anthony, managed a filling station for 30 years. Now he draws a monthly pension of 1,200 euros. Rosie receives the minimum pension of almost 500 euros. Soon they'll have to pay taxes on these benefits. The cost of living is rising, and fewer and fewer medicines are covered by insurance. Every day, more government austerity measures are announced. I didn't think it was funny at all when the politicians said we'd been lazy. They can't say that. Hard words like that in our situation. They ripped us off for 30 years, and I voted for them too. Now I don't go to vote anymore. Many Portuguese, especially the old and the less educated, have resigned themselves to the inevitable, even in a college town like Coimbra. Many young people live here. Of the 140,000 residents, 20,000 are students. Many have plans to go abroad, leaving Portugal with a potentially massive brain drain. It's frustrating. There were few jobs as it was, but for us young people, there are none at all now. I don't see any future, not in Portugal. Of course I hope I can stay in Portugal after I graduate, but if there isn't anything, I'll just have to go to another country. Even Portuguese Prime Minister Pedro Passos Coelho said anyone who could go abroad should. Rosie Almeida's daughter did just that. Now she sends money back to her mother regularly. More and more young immigrants are sending money to their parents, taking on a function that the state can no longer perform. Living conditions in Portugal are no good anymore. You can hardly feed your family now. But still it's not good that so many are having to leave and go far away from their families. That's especially bad because of the children. Ricardo and his brother Rui will be joining their mother as soon as they can in Angola. Rosie and her husband will stay behind. No matter how tough the going gets, Portugal is their home and they're not leaving.